November the 2nd, 2004, the rucksack and a pair of heavy boots I set off down my street, Hayward Road in Bristol, heading for Jerusalem. Into the winter, it was a descent, a spiralling, closer to nature, away from the city life. Feeling a connection with the snuffly nighttime animals, it's dark by half three, four. Feeling the fear and the glare of the bright lights, the A303, crossing that one night. The bright lights of Winchester, of Salisbury, these strange human cities I was more familiar with after a period of time with the animal life, the night owls, the bark of a fox. And this piece is about that journey, it's called Persephone's Descent, the cycle of going down, entering the winter, entering the underworld. Not a dreadful thing, a natural thing, but a, a scary thing.
the last one. And it's in memory of my uh, nephew, who's now a very grown up nurse on the front line in a cancer hospital in Manchester.
We're going to carry on the pilgrimage journey now. This is some weeks later. Thank you. 
days later, I was at the home of Nadia in Podgorica, the capital of Montenegro. Nadia is a sister of Zelko, who sadly has since died. Zelko was a refugee from Mostar. He was a refugee because life became dangerous for him as a Montenegrin man. Um, so nominally um, Christian, although most people in Mostar, a very cosmopolitan city, wore their religious and ethnic affiliation lightly. And he had a Muslim girlfriend. And as the war uh, drew in, so it became very harder for liaisons to be kept up and people had to leave and he had to flee and leave his car out in pilot business. So there I was, a guest of Nadia, huddled up, uh, the winter was really closing in now, in front of a, a six bar electric fire with his, uh, with her niece and uh, I was getting claustrophobic inside the city and wanted to visit the shrine of Saint Vasily, patron saint of that part of Vasily, his shrine was Ostrog Monastery. I saw a postcard up on the wall and I was curious about it and when Nadia told me well, it's, it's quite close uh, and it's actually his saint, his saint day uh, today. So that I then, there and then I decided to catch a bus uh, which luckily I found one slithering its back wheels in the slush and uh, I set off the following day. Now this, the pilgrims were coming back when I got off the bus wearing plastic bags on their shoes, uh, not a well-heeled bunch of people. The snow was falling again and to start with I could follow their tracks in the snow but as the slopes got steeper and I got higher I lost where the, where the way was and the mist was starting to come down, the snow was still falling. I found a hydroelectric pipe and pulled my way up with saplings, um, found a false path that led into a, a big tunnel and then I, my feet tripped over railway lines, I'd been following a railway line, not a path. I backtracked, carried, pulling, on pulling myself up the slope, getting quite hypothermic, legs trembling, sweating, fearing for my safety. Eventually I stumbled hut where I could hear the muffled sounds of bleating. Knocked on the door, someone opened the door and brushed my snow off me from head to foot. And before long I was in the warm, eating little cubes of sizzling bacon, drinking the rakia, and there a young woman sang me this song. It's called Chai Sant Boye. I shall not sing it to you, but I shall play the tune on the trumpet.
At this point, I'd like to introduce my colleague, Emmy Broughton. It's been I, I, I until now, but it's um, in life's journey, I've been. Uh, it's a wonderful thing to find uh, Emmy sometime last winter, wasn't it? It's sort of autumn. We found each other. Um, we met at a storytelling performance when you returned from Palestine. Ah, okay, that's right. So that's, all, that's about a year ago then. Mm. Yeah. Yes, and I came up to you after the gig and said, please, can I play music for you while you story tell? <laughs> so there, and, and then we, we just did... just said yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> of course. <laughs> How could I not say yes? And, uh, uh, and, uh, and then we did several gigs in the winter, didn't we? Uh, art, harp with art, is that right? Yeah, creative gatherings in people's houses. Yeah, so here we, here we are again, for different reasons. Uh, we, we're locked down, we're a sort of merger of the two households, I think it's uh, now allowed. Um, we've been practicing for this concert this last week. Um, and uh, yes, so harp with, uh, with art, trumpet, <laughs> inside my, my home. Um, yeah, I believe it's the rainbow's a gift for me mm. next. This is a more recent piece. So I came back from my pilgrimage and the weird and wonderful aspects of life ended, except of course they never do. This is about a little journey from my house to the local chippy, Hamlin's. It's a good, it's a good chippy if you're in Barton Hill. It was a rainy day, like the, the, today when we were recording, and uh, the streets were cleared of people, but just then there was a clearing in the sky the sun came out and there was a rainbow and I looked around, nobody else to see it and I thought this is a, a gift just for me and so that's the title of this tune, The Rainbow's a Gift for Me. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
Mmm, a rainbow's a gift for me. Well, we're coming to the end of the concert. The next piece uh, has been known for a couple of years as Longing, Belonging and Palestine, the prologue. I wrote it for a piece uh, for a suite of music uh, put together last year in memory of time spent in Palestine. I wanted to find a way to, to configure the stories that we'd heard from Palestinians about what it's like to live under occupation, uh, not so much politically as around their feeling of connection to land. And then something else happened recently that put a new element to this piece of music. And that's the passing away, away of my friend, Keith Tippett. Four years I was in the Seabed Jazz Workshop Orchestra that, that uh, really started me off in my direction as a my chosen direction as a professional musician. And Keith was so uh, encouraging um, and on a musical plane so absolutely inspiring. So I've turned this piece, which was about connection to land, into a tribute to Keith. And one of the things about Keith is that he was pretty rooted in his part of Gloucestershire. He lived uh, where Julie, uh, our nine children, were, were raised, and Julie still lives there, in a, um, a cottage. And um, nearby is the Tortworth, it's known as the Tortworth Oak in some circles, but actually it's a giant chestnut, and a few years ago I went to visit it lots of photographs and created a kind of artwork around it and uh, I, I think of Keith as rooted in West Country and connected to this massive ancient tree pre-Roman several thousand years old no one knows quite how old it is it's like a, a woodland and like Keith the tree is indefatigable and has Created has spawned lots of small trees around it. It's created this woodland, and Keith uh, is like that. His spirit was enormous, and has encouraged people like me and countless others to ch choose a path in music. So this piece is dedicated to Keith, and this starts off with a poem. Monsters and motions disturbed from deeps. From weightless silence, plucking a child's world with music box pling, pulling this heart string. A dedicated artist dies yet resonates forever unsurrendered no compromise bellows of spirit through fingertips tip it bent over brooding encanting blacksmithing magic offstage cheek Crude as crap, joke crackling for our warming. Diffidence? Not his forte. The English are not supposed to fuss, but he was made of other stuff. Lungs empty now. He inspired many who blow embers, embed the muse, light fuses and refuse to let dull 
normal win. Keith, our twin. Shaman of unshaved sideburn. Burn! Swing fast, swing low, swing high.
captain of the ground, swashbuckling, conjuring up monsters and motions disturbed from deeps, from weightless silence, plucking a child's world with music box playing, pulling this heart string. Thank you very much for uh, listening, and um, well, there you have it. Tribute to Keith. Um, I think that's all I want to say. <laughs>